Just 24 hours after the Ontario Health Coalition blasted the Ford government over money for private for-profit services, another organization in the province is raising alarm bells around funding. The Metamorphosis Network is an organization that represents more than 100 not-for-profit groups in Peel region supporting health and human services. The consortium revealing details of a large funding gap in a joint press conference today with Ontario union leaders. The group says government funding for the region falls well below that of other municipalities. Joining us now to talk about the organization's concerns is Ray Applebaum, who is part of the Metamorphosis Network's leadership team and the CEO of Peel Senior Link. Thanks for being with us today, Ray. Thanks so much, Melissa. I appreciate it. First off, can you tell us a little more about what the Metamorphosis Network is and does and some of the services it supports? Yeah, very quickly, uh, just to summarize. So back in 2004, we actually created the Metamorphosis Network for a different purpose. It's an interesting story in that uh, we developed with the onslaught of local health integration networks out of the Ministry of Health, which we're gonna take over the old regional offices of the Ministry of Health. And our concern at that time is very similar today in that we got together as nonprofit charities across the region and we advocated for the knowledge and, and knowledge exchange of information about and services through community support services, which we really felt with the changeover, there was gonna be a gap in an understanding and appreciation for the work we did. Uh, turn now forward to 2023, and we had the Ford government coming out with the potential act of Bill 1, 12, which was the potential dissolution of the region appeal, which we now know has been reversed. And the Metamorphosis Network took on a new role back in June, July last summer to work with the transition board uh, and the Ontario government to try to convince them that that was not going to be in the best interest of the people that we serve, which primarily is the vulnerable population of our community. So here we are now under the umbrella of the Metamorphosis Network which has been established for two purposes. One, to engage and educate the community about the gaps and the concern about funding, which is having a tremendous impact on charities and the region's ability to be able to adequately and sustainably deliver services through an equitable funding formula, which we're calling for. Let's zoom in on that funding in Peel. What areas do you believe the Ontario government is falling short? You know, it's interesting. I'd have to stand here and name just about every part of the health system and human services uh, sector to be able to answer that question. In, in a nutshell, every sector is underfunded, whether it's healthcare, children's services, hospitals, uh, education, all of the key health and human services in this region have been for decades. This is not a problem that started just pre-COVID. This is a problem that has been going on in terms of the lack of equitable funding between communities in Ontario. And this has really been problematic and of course exacerbated through three years of COVID, which just simply underscored how big this is and how much has to be done to achieve equitable funding. Okay, you've got a long list. I understand that. I wonder if there are any talks going on between Metamorphosis and the province to increase funding to some of those items. Uh, the answer is yes. Um, we, we do, within the scope and the mandate of the transition board, which is our vehicle, one of our vehicles, to be able to communicate our concerns. And we're feeding them information as we acquire it through uh, looking at the data and the evidence that would demonstrate the real numbers and the, the gap, therefore, in each of the areas that I talked about. Number two is through uh, Peel Region Council. We just came out of a council meeting where I did a deputation with one of my colleagues. We are very well received and the region is more than prepared to provide support, whether that's staffing or pulling the kind of data that we need to be able to make our evidence and our case known to Queen's Park. And third, um, and these aren't just exclusive, the third would be uh, meetings that we've had with MPPs, 
uh, region, not only the regional council, but municipal councils. We're meeting with all three, and we're meeting with senior staff from all municipalities so that we can really make our case. And I guess the fourth would be our next phase, which is engaging the community in this dialogue. It's absolutely critical now, between now and the spring, when the transition board is scheduled to submit their report to the minister, we're, we are going to be working furiously to gather that information and put it into clear messaging to the community so that they'll have knowledge and information to make informed decisions going forward. Let's get to some specifics. The organization that you oversee, Peel Senior Link, obviously works with Peel's seniors yes. population. Yes. In what ways could your That's team correct. improve the lives of seniors if there was more money available? Well, the first thing is we would be able to uh, enable the services to be more effective than they are today with the appropriate resources that we lack just because of the funding shortage. So that's, that's one. Uh, and to give you an example, uh, some of the supports would be things like what we call behavioral support. Uh, behavioral support is for individuals who are having challenges in their lives and they need further support to be able to uh, best be served by the staff. So training and education for personal support workers uh, would be part of that. Uh, the ability to be able to have a nurse practitioner or an RPN uh, working with our team and be able to deliver uh, you know, support to them. Not so much medical, more related to you know, having a nursing background and having an understanding of complex chronic conditions and how to best serve them in a community setting. We're not a hospital, we're not a retirement home. We are an assisted living, the province calls it, program, uh, which enables seniors to live in their own apartment or the community. We operate under a hub and spoke model so we can serve both. And it, we also have an ability to be able to keep people living very long periods of time, even at a very elderly stage and with multiple chronic conditions. Um, and so that's the other part. The, the other piece would be expanding and be able to take more people off the wait list. We have wait lists of 150 to 200 people waiting in the region to get in to an assisted living program. So uh, th this would also enable us to do that. It would also address the pressures in the hospital in that it would avoid people going to the ER uh, by sort of upstream support services prevention. It would also enable us to move people out of the hospital, whether they're on surgical floors or they're in ALC, alternate level of care patient. They're no longer needing medical service, but they have nowhere to go. Uh, they can't get into a long-term care home because the wait lists are, are very large. They have an inability to get into an informal, uh, affordable housing setting because of also long wait lists. So more funding uh, and support, not just to our agency, but to others around us who are partners in our service delivery would enable us to be able to better serve the community and take pressure off hospitals and long-term care home resources. We appreciate you sharing your concerns with us. Ray Alpelbaum with the Metamorphosis Network. Thanks for being with us. Thank you.